What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a dungeon crawling roguelike called Forward Escape the Fold. This is actually kind of a strange game in that everything is constructed of cards or like tiles basically. And that's where the name comes in. You have no choice but to go forward. You can't move sideways, you can't move backwards. You move forwards, and every single tile that you step on and every single thing that you interact with is going to have an effect on your character. Along the way, you're going to assemble a build, sort of Binding of Isaac style with items and relics, trying to give yourself the greatest chance possible in order to escape from the dungeon. Uh, this game comes equipped with many different characters, with many different builds, hundreds of different, I well, 150 different items, of which in two hours I've seen 50 of them. So I guess we can extrapolate and say that it's probably going to take you around about six hours to get all the items unlocked. But anyways, it does have meta progression. Every single time you play, you'll unlock new characters, new items, stuff like that that'll be shuffled into the runs. I figured that some people might like the look of this game. It's not out quite yet, but it comes out later on in March. I've been given access to an early build by the developer, and so we're diving on in and we're taking a look. If after watching this you wanted to get forward for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description so that you can check that out. And on top of that, you can also take a look at my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live at any moment, at any time. I could be right behind you, right now. Uh, anyways, let's let's play for. We'll start a new game. There's a number of different gameplay modes that you can play on. For the sake of today's video, we'll more than likely play on classic mode since that's really all you have unlocked when you first start out the game. You gotta beat it a couple times to unlock the different modes. There is a challenge mode that basically adds constraints to your run and forces you to operate inside them and then overcome them. There is an expert mode that is much more difficult. There's a journey mode. I have not unlocked yet. I've beaten the game twice, but you gotta beat it thrice in order to unlock something nice, and so unfortunately, journey mode is not unlocked, although I am interested in checking it out at some point. Uh, but for now, let's dive on into classic mode. There we go. We get to pick from some characters. Uh, you start out with only Edward, which is this guy right here. I would like to see their name displayed up above the card when you just kind of have them highlighted. Every character has multiple builds that they start out with. That's something to keep in mind. So when you click on the character, they all start with inventory items. Edward has the apple. He gets 6 HP back when he starts a level. Uh, if you play as the Black Knight, who's my personal favorite, uh, he starts out with a cursed item that makes all of his enemies attack in multiple directions, and he's got a monster bone that lowers all the monster's damage. Uh, very, very cool stuff. I haven't really wrapped my head around Faze yet, or Fade. I've done a couple of runs with Fade, but none of them have gone very well. But Fade basically kind of breaks the rules of the game and can move in directions that you're not supposed to move in, in exchange for her run being extra difficult. And so anyways, we'll probably start out with Edward since he's the default guy. That's who you're going to start out with. As of right now, I've unlocked two abilities for Edward. Uh, we have the Pillar of Fire. It deals two damage to all visible enemies. And then he's got a reshuffle, which reshuffles the board and puts everything in different spots, just in case you find yourself in a really tough place that you can't surpass. Uh, we'll go with his default ability, the Pillar of Fire, and we'll dive on into the game, and we'll talk about kind of the mechanics and how it all functions. Into the heart of the web, along a winding path, an army of spiders has blocked your way and sprays you with their web. You manage to get out of the way and move forward, ready to fight the queen. East Coasters are going to have to get ready for that. I read somewhere that there's like fist-sized spiders that are parachuting into the East Coast, like Joro spiders or something. So, like, welcome to my life, dude. I live in a swamp, and uh, you don't go out in the bulrushes. Don't do that. Like, in the marsh that I live in, there's these things called St. Andrew's Cross Spiders. They make their nests out in the reeds. Uh, just don't leave the path when you're out in the swamp because you're going to have a horrible moment where you're out in the reeds and you start looking around and there's going to be hundreds of like golf ball sized spiders just everywhere all around you even on the path that you just took to get into the reeds. And you're going to have kind of that hot feeling flush across your face like oh god oh god oh god oh god and there will be no escape. That's, that's one thing that a swamp dweller learns really really fast. Don't go out in the reeds. That's a mistake. All right. So, the way that the game functions, we can move anywhere forward that we are adjacent to. So we can move diagonally, we can move forward, uh, but aside from that, we have different tiles or cards that do things. Uh, mana potions, they will basically lower... Oops, I've got the wrong ability. Let me re-roll it real fast. Okay, so I've got my right ability this time around. Uh, mana potions are going to reduce the cooldown. Well, this isn't even a cooldown. They're going to fulfill the cost of this ability so that you can utilize it. 
healing potions, they heal your health, which is denoted on your little card right here. Uh, this number on a monster card, if you step into the tile that is indicated by the arrows at the bottom of the card, he will attack you, he will deal that much damage, and then he will die, and you will have slain him. He will then drop loot. Uh, so, like, a lot of this game is really, really discerning between what fights you should take and what fights you should not take. And in the cases that you end up taking fights that you don't want to take, how can you mitigate that to get ready for the next fight that you don't want to take? The UI is fairly simple. You can click on this tab right here to show off all the relics that you have at the moment that are modifying your playthrough. You've got your health, you've got your armor, you've got your mana, you've got your skulls, which are a currency that you can spend at certain events. You've got gold coins, which once again, same as skulls, and then a list of your items right here. I do think that this UI could be done a little bit better. I would very much, since they've got a lot of screen space on the sides that's not being used, it would be cool if you had like a stack of coins, basically, that got larger and larger and larger with a number next to it for how many coins you have, big pile of skulls and so on and so forth. Things that are a little bit more immersive rather than just kind of like sterile numbers down here. Uh, I think that's one place where this game could actually improve greatly is just in terms of presentation. Presentation. Uh, but anyways, let's grab a mana potion over here and we're gonna go around this werewolf because he's scary And he looks like he wants to hurt me We just picked up a shield that's gonna put armor on our character So armor is damaged prior to your health being damaged We have five right here Which should be enough to get us through this zombie and through that weird eldritch monster And so we've got some gold coins this guy only has one HP But he poisons us when he hits us a uh, poison is gonna tick your health down for every step you take forward on the grid I'm going to get these four coins right here because we have no choice but to fight this guy. I'm going to go around that monster right there and try to build up my shielding. Yeah, building up my shielding worked out okay. Ooh, three damage, huh? Ow. We're going to survive this with one HP, but luckily we have the apple, which will heal us at the beginning of the next level. So we're not in too bad a shape, but that was definitely a rough first grid. Uh, we have a heart right here. That's going to increase our max health by one. And then we get to pick a relic for completing the level. We can get the green beetle. It lowers the amount of poison cards for every corrupted item in your inventory. We've got the healing root. It means that you don't get poisoned the next time you step on a poison tile, but the card is destroyed. And we have protection times three when starting a level. I'm going to do that. Protection is basically a armor over time effect. Uh, what it will do is every time you take a step, it gives you one free armor uh, for three turns. You arrive in front of an altar that seems to have not seen a visitor for quite a long time. An inscription is engraved. Entrust to the gods your mortal blood and you will be honored. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of mortal blood left, so we're just not going to do that. We're, gonna, we're going to carry on. Uh, the smell of dung is appalling in the dungeon. As you go forward, you see a sleeping body of an impossibly large dog. Despite your best efforts at stealth, the dog stirs and wakes up. It turns and looks at you with hatred. Are you sure that it's hatred, dude? Look how cute he is. He's got three times the amount of heads for petting. I don't know. I don't believe there's such a thing as a bad dog. There's only bad owners. And so, like, I feel like, I feel like we can reclaim this dog. That's how I feel about it. I'm going to grab health potions when and where I can to get my health back up. We will fight that imp. I fear that I may have gotten myself into trouble here, though, with that mimic. One mana potion. Okay, three damage taken right there. I was going to try to go around, but honestly, there's no point. I think we're just going to get scuffed a little bit right here. I'm going to fight him. We'll come over to here. We'll refill our armor a little bit. We are going to have to fight you, unfortunately. I'm going to light off my flame pillar and see what it converts these guys into. It looks like it turned them all into coins. We're only going to take two damage from him, so I'm willing to take a chance on it. And it looks like we survived yet another level. Now, obviously, there's a hefty component of RNG to this game. Sometimes you just get unplayable grids. Like, some grids are just like, you're going to die right here. And I do think that that's sort of a flaw with the game. But then again, it sort of ties into the roguelike atmosphere that the game is going for as well. I think that for some people, that's going to be a plus, And for some people, that's going to be a minus. So I'm not really going to talk about it too much. But anyways, there have been grids that I've played in this game where it's just like, well, I guess I die. And there's not really much you can do about it. So here we got a choice of relics. We can go for the carrot, which gives us... What looks like plus one to healing potions, minus one to shield cards. We've got meat, which means every time we fight, there's a chance to get three stacks of a positive or negative status effect. I'd rather not. Um, there's the bronze key. That gives us free armor whenever we open a chest. 
So I'll probably go for that. That sounds like a net positive. Whereas all the other ones sort of seem like there's a downside to taking them. Uh, the road you were taking until now has become too difficult to walk on. Whilst looking for another path, you are attacked by a horde of ghouls. No! That doesn't look like a ghoul. That just looks like an angry little little salamander. It's like flick him off your shoe. Okay. I think we go armor, armor, and then we'll decide based on the grid where we want to go with these two. Okay. We can't get to the five healing potion without taking five damage. And I tend to think about it like this, and this t tends to have made me kind of successful in the game and win fairly frequently. I I th I'd say I have about a 50% win rate. I treat my armor and my HP all as one number. And then I just total things up basically against that one large number. And I try to find whichever one leaves me with health is higher, effectively, whenever I make a decision. Uh, so we've got four damage right there. We'll go ahead and take it. Because we can... Ooh, there's a sword. Uh, what a sword does is it deals that amount of damage to everything on the grid. So if we pick up this sword, everything will have its strength reduced by two. So this guy will have one when he attacks us. This guy will be dead and just get converted into treasure. This guy will have four. So on and so forth. I'm going to grab the shield. I'm going to grab the mana potion, the gold coins... That right there. I don't know if the cursed chest will give us our plus two armor. There is a verified cursed item inside that chest, no matter what we do. So we will have to take a debuff to our run. However, there are a lot of things that stack with cursed chests and, like, reward you for having cursed items. So doing, like, a full curse run can work out in positive ways. Uh, let's go ahead and fight the worm over here. We'll take the shield. Okay, I'm going to take the three gold coins, and then we'll go for the shield. We'll go for the shield, which mitigates this guy. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a whomping with the salamander over here, but we're going to survive it. And then the plus six that we get at the beginning of the next level bring us back up to 12. So we won't be in too bad a shape. We can get the greed ring. Uh, greed basically increases the amount of money that you have. If you click on these cards, you can learn what all these status effects do. Um, that'll make it so that whenever our greed stacks turn off, our power triggers... It's not bad. Uh, we don't have a way to generate greed right now, so there's a lot of cards that'll be like, every time you get hit, get greed. Every time you pick up a coin, get greed. We don't have any of those, and so we can, we you know, we could really, really use that. It stacks well with our ability, but we don't have a way to generate greed as of right now. Uh, when you're no longer poisoned, you gain armor, okay? Uh, we have, when you buy a card, you get two immunity. What does immunity do? You can't have status effects as long as you have immunity. Okay, so it just basically uses up the buff debuff slot. Okay. Um, I think protective plant for now. With almost no energy left, you're trying to climb the last pass of a mountain when you see the glow of a house in the distance. As you approach, you are greeted by shepherds who invite you to follow them to their village. Take the opportunity to spend your gold coins. Okay, yeah, let's go to the store. What you got here, pal? Uh, so we've got monster meat. When an enemy attacks you, they have a chance to deal poison, so that's a curse. After being attacked by a boss, you gain as many gold coins as HP you have left. That's not bad. Uh, the next sword card you pick up will do twice as much damage, and then the card is destroyed. I'm going to take the golden necklace, but the other stuff doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing, you just saw me do it. I, I think that the leave button right here should be replaced with an outline of a card that says leave on it, and you drag your character up there. Basically, every interaction in the game is done by dragging and overlapping a card, except for when you're inside of a location like a shop. For whatever reason, and my muscle memory takes over, and I swear to God, every time I play this game, I try to drag my card onto the leave button up there. I don't know if I'm the only person that that happens to, but it seems to denote to me that the UI has taught my brain certain lessons, and my brain is just trying to adhere to those rules that have been set out by the game board, and then I get denied by just kind of a clickable unity button up here. We'll go to the tavern. Hey, they'll let me restore my health. Why is this why is this full health like 25% off? What's wrong with it? Mm, I'm going to take it, but An elderly woman appears on your way and offers you a drink. You inspect the disgusting vial and decide to refuse it politely. The woman in anger transforms herself into an abominable creature and tells you, "Death is the gift that I offer you." Yeah, that's why I didn't drink it. Oh boy, that's a new one. I've never seen that monster before, and I played for a couple of hours. All right, um, well, we've got lots of healing around here, so let's take some fights and just kind of see what happens. We get points based on how many fights we take, so 
it's usually a good idea to take fights when and where they exist. I'm going to try to keep my armor up and just kind of practice avoidance here. Okay. I mean, it's fine. It could be going better, but, you know, it's, it's fine. I'm not... Okay, it's not fine anymore. It is less than fine. We'll get him. I was going to say, if this guy deals more than 16 damage, we're in deep trouble. So there it is. We've survived yet another floor of the dungeon. Uh, we've got the Amethyst. Whenever you have stealth, you give plus one to gold coins. We have the Book of Mana. Increases the chance that the enemies loot as a mana potion card. When starting a level, gain one armor durability for every corrupted item in your inventory. I don't think we have any corrupted items, although that would be really, really good had we them. I don't get stealth very often. I don't really want more mana potions, so this is kind of a throwaway level. I'm just going to kind of pick something. As you take a path that winds through the valley, you are targeted by a hideous group of monsters. There is no other option but to find them. Yeah, that would qualify as hideous. I think that if I saw that on the road in front of me on the 80, I'd probably swerve. Yeah, that seems about right. Take that six armor. Take that healing potion. Take dat mana, and we're going to hold on to it until we actually need it. Like where we have like a really rough grid. I could get four armor right there, and I'd only take one damage for the fight. But for now, let's practice being a little bit safer. We've got a chest of the dead over here where we can spend our skulls, which we get for every monster we kill. All right, so we've got the Book of Protection. Increases the chance that enemies drop loot as shield cards. The mace, as long as you have protection, bosses do minus one damage. And chests give you five gold and two blindness. Uh, blindness makes it so that you can't see the corners of the cards for, like, the values. I'll probably go with the Book of Protection. That sounds all right. I think I can live with that. Uh, we can take nine damage right there. We can take eight damage right there. But this gives us a run on these shields over here. So I'm going to go for the shields and take the double fight. She also dropped the Protection card, which is great. Let's grab the eight shield from right there. Um, I'm going to need this other shield card, I think. Yeah, it became necessary. I think I'm silenced right now. Yeah, I'm silenced. I was going to use my ability to make these guys not hit as hard. Okay. I have made mistakes. Okay, I'm going to have to take the poison card. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. Uh, we barely survived that one, but we managed to weasel our way out of it. We can take the strawberry, gain HP when you get a status. We've got the nut, get three armor and blindness whenever you start a level. Or the lapis lazuli, which gold coins have a chance of giving you mana. Probably go with the, with the strawberry. We're getting chunked pretty good now that we're getting further on into the game. You enter, or the store that you enter contains the most wonderful treasures you have ever seen. Their splendor hypnotizes you, and you want to spend your pennies. Okay. The stealth diamond. Debuffs enemies when we have stealth. We have the death orb when you use your power and inflict one damage on all enemies for every corrupted item in your inventory. Don't have any corrupted items, but that does stack very, very well with our ability. All gold coins inflict one damage to you. I guess I'll take the death orb for right now. And maybe we'll grab a few curses. Uh, the deeper you go into the dark forest, the more numerous and gigantic the spiders are. Yeah, we got that one when we started off before I had to re-roll. I do like the character art very much. Like the monster art and things. I think it looks good. I think we're going to have to fight the corrupted eagle. Three damage to the five. We'll take four. Go over to here. Um, you know, why, when I can just go around, you know what I mean? Like, if I can do, oh, we got a, we got a simple grid this time. Thanks, game. Appreciate it. Just like you can have impossibly hard grids, sometimes you have grids that are shockingly easy as well. I will take these gold coins. I will. I will take them and enjoy them. Right here, we're probably going to want to play that to mitigate damage right here. Okay. It's acceptable. I'm going to zigzag right here. Oh, never mind. The zigzagging won't help me.
Ah, uh, we're dead. It's one of those things about this game that I think you're going to run into is that because I... So the player agency with this game is all front-loaded. Like, it's all the decisions you make up track. And then once you get further down in, you'll realize that little decisions you made like seven turns ago were the difference between you living and dying. And so, like, the agency is not in the outcome. The agency is kind of in the foundations that you lay down. And so, anyways, I think that's going to be one of those little things. Like, I've never particularly liked it when I play, like, Slay the Spire, one of those games where, like, I know I'm going to lose because I haven't just, like, picked up the stuff that I need yet or whatever else has happened. Uh, in the case of this game, you always have kind of those moments where you run the math real fast and you're like, oh, well, I guess this run is over before you even make your play. I, I would like to have a little bit more agency right there, but, you know... It, to be fair, to be fair, our character did have an alternate ability that allows him to reshuffle the board, uh, but we were silenced right there, so it wouldn't have helped us. But anyways, like, that's why the reshuffle is kind of nice compared to the flame pillar. I don't usually take the flame pillar, but since that's what a new player will start out with, I figured I'd run it real fast so you could see how it works in actuality. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll try out the Black Knight. This guy is my dude. I like the Black Knight. Uh, we'll run stealth on him. We have the ability to convert into mist, basically. Uh, which is actually really useful because when you're in mist form, nothing attacks you when you go past it, even if it has an arrow pointing at you. So it's really, really nice. There's a terrifying specter. He doesn't seem that terrifying. He seems kind of, like, adorable. Like, you know how sometimes something can be really ugly, but because it's really threatening and really, really hostile, but ultimately, like, really, really tiny and not a threat to you, it ends up being cute? That's kind of how I feel about that guy. Now, we have a special parameter here. When you're playing as the Black Knight, all of your enemies attack multiple directions. There's nothing you can do about that. As you can see, the amount of arrows they have has gone up to a shocking extent. However, you start out also with another relic that makes it so all enemies have their damage reduced by two. And so the Black Knight seems like he's going to be really, really hard, but I find that if you stick with the Black Knight and you're smart about using your stealth, you'll be fine. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll kill those two guys off right there. We've got swords on this side. That'll kill everything on the board. So that's exactly what we needed. I'm going to take the sword right there. I'm going to take the shield right here for this fight. Now the Black Knight, the, the balance to the Black Knight is that he tends to be a very low scoring character when it comes to your endgame score. Uh, because your score is dictated by the amount of damage and like monsters that you fought on your adventure. And, and so that's another thing to keep carefully in mind is just that like he tends to score lower on the point grid than other characters because his enemies deal a lot less damage. As long as you are blind, bestows minus one to the enemy. We've got five gold and blindness from chests. You get greed three when you start a level. I want greed three. Let's go greed three so that maybe we can pick up something that stacks with greed. A short man calls out to you and offers you a game. He prevents you with three chests and asks you to choose one. You open the one on the left. Uh, we can get a max HP. We can get some gold coins. Probably take the max HP. Okay, it's the disgusting vile lady again. We've got a fight with death itself. Well, let's just tear it up straight up the middle, dude. Why not? Like, we're doing okay on health and whatnot. I'm sure haphazardly throwing myself at the enemy will have no consequences. I only have eight gold coins, and so I don't really feel like there's a point in taking the merchant chest back there. Yeah, that's fine. Don't love the poison, but I'll live with it. So over here would be a really good opportunity to use our stealth. And as you can see, the monsters that we faced did not attack us right there. Thus, the incredible, massive utility of having a stealth ability. Uh, we can get an emerald. Improves the effect of greed by plus three. Shiny sword. It adds three swords to all future levels. The flaming shield. When you attack an enemy, you gain protection. All of these are very, very good. Emerald stacks with our build. More swords never hurts. And that protection right there stacks up really fast on the Black Knight. All three of these are great picks, in my opinion. This one right here is legendary, so I'm going to take it. Its value is higher. A complex system of cogs blocks the door. After several hours, you inadvertently put your hand on a colored stone, which activates the opening system. Upon entering, you discover a room full of jewels. That's not a jewel. That's a dog that hates me. We've got the scythe inflicts one damage after each move if your power is charged and ready to be used. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, the apple is also really, really nice. I'll take the scythe. 
Oh, wow, there are treasures in here. When you attack an enemy, get four gold coins. Woo! Definitely want that. Ow! Okay. I am in pain. A terrifying hissing sound grows louder and louder. It's snakes! Um, yeah, health. Health feels... Health feels like the pick right now. I don't know exactly why I'm taking damage at the moment. Did I pick up something bad? Oh, I thought it was inflicting the damage to the enemies. That's a my B. That's a my B. So basically, I can't sit on my power very much. Okay. Uh, let's get our health back here. Uh, that miscalculation actually kind of cost me. Yeah, it's probably our best option. We'll take a little bit of damage right there. I don't think we're going to survive the boss right here. I just, I have my doubts. Yep, that's that. Game over. Unfortunately, that was more on me than anything else. I thought that it was going to deal damage to the enemies while my power was charged. And I was like, oh, dude, that's dope. I definitely want that. No, it inflicts one damage to me. And to be fair, it doesn't say who it... It, well, it does say that it has a corrupted negative effect. Okay, that was my fault. That was my fault. That that was my that was my brain fart. All right, that was that was me basically torpedoing the run. Uh, foul smell fills your nostrils, and you find the source of the atrocity. It's hideous creatures waiting to devour you. He looks hungry. He looks like he might, uh, you know, he looks like he might TNA a little ombre. Yeah, that seems about right. I feel like fighting the bear is a bad idea with my current health predicament. However, that worked out great. Uh, we're going to take her right up the center here and go get that health potion. Nine health is fine. A couple more heals over here, too. Get us all nice and patched back up, and we've survived our first dungeon. And uh, we've got the nut, which is armor durability and blindness, the padlock, and the stealth cloak. Yeah, let's go with the stealth cloak. The stealth cloak pretty strong. You arrive at the edge of a small lake where the air is pure. Its perfectly round appearance makes you think that it is not natural. You feel drawn to it and receive its benefits as you dive in. Oh yeah, dude. I'll take a full heal. Why not? Your vision is blurred. Demonic presents are nearby and not of the ho-ho-ho variety. You open your eyes wide and see a black shadow. It launches itself at you. He just wants a hug, man. He just wants to hang out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my stealth right here. Oh, yeah. If I initiate the engage, I get a bunch of stealth. That's actually pretty raw. That's not bad. You can basically stay in stealth for, like, long periods of time. Just means that you definitely have to take fights, but, I mean, it's not bad. It's not the worst item. A merchant chest, we can buy some stuff. I wonder if that stacks. Adds one shield called it. Yeah, let's see if we can get it to stack. Do I get four now whenever I attack an enemy? I should, right? I do. I get four stealth whenever I attack an enemy. That's amazing. Uh, poison cards give you armor durability. Any healing potion card gives you greed times one. That's not bad. When you buy a card, get immunity. I'll probably take the pineapple. Pineapple's fine. We unlock the flaming sword. Prior to enemy attacks, you have a 50% chance of dealing one damage if you don't have armor. Okay. That's all right. I mean, I feel like that could fit into most builds. You feel the weight of your eyelids getting heavier and then collapse to the floor. When you wake up, you face a door that says enter or die in blood. No doubt you must face what is beyond the door. Oh, yeah. He looks pleasant. He seems like he's probably an enjoyable chap. Uh, let's go ahead and we still got stealth. There is a chest of the dead right there, which I like the idea of. We can spend our skulls for more relics. But I need to refill my stealth stacks, unfortunately. Dance in right there. Get you. Probably just go up this way. 
That seems okay to me. Another merchant chest right there. I've only got $9, though, so, like, how useful could that chest actually be? Yeah, I'm gonna say that Stealth Cape, undisputed MVP winner. Uh, the Stealth Cape, pretty good. Pretty good. I'm, uh, fairly pleased with Stealth Cape right now. Stealth Cape has made me happy. Alright, so Nut, Meat, Healing Root. Mm, probably Nut, I guess? I don't know. When you get stealth, gain three gold coins. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, baby. You're speaking my language now. You enter a house where the smell of potions is intoxicating. The sorcerer offers to let you taste them. I'm kind of like Pobre right now, dude. Um, I guess I'll just recharge my ability just in case my stealth falls off. An elderly woman is offering... She's going to kill me unless I drink her fluids. Okay. There's a lot of people in this adventure that want me to drink their fluids and thusly threaten to kill me if I don't imbibe. And frankly, I'm finding it to be a little bit inhibitive at the moment. Chest of the dead, we have 39 skulls. We've got an electric shield when your armor runs out, inflict one damage to every enemy. We've got reveals the distance left before the end of the level, increase the chance that enemies drop gold coins. Probably go for that one right there. I mean, we can afford more, so I'll go for the map, too. Uh, we have 14 steps left until we run out of dungeon. I've got to refresh my stealth. I'll probably do that right here and right here, like on the easy baby fights. Yeah, that seems to be working okay. We've got eight stacks of stealth left. Chest of the Dead is back up. Merchant Chest. We don't really have a lot of money. We don't really have a lot of skulls, but we can look. Uh, we got the Green Beetle. We've got the Oil Lamp. And we've got the Bronze Ticket. I'll probably make myself immune to blindness. Blindness is kind of annoying. And it negates the... Like, so we get blinded by our nut right there for the free armor that we get at the beginning of the level. And so anyways, I feel like that solves one of our kind of gaping liabilities. Uh, whenever you attack an enemy, gain protection times two. Yeah, that... I'm attacking a lot of enemies, uh, so that's probably good. We can get health back when we pick up coins sometimes. I'll probably take the flaming shield since that stacks with kind of my style at the moment. You know that for several hours a giant spider has been discreetly following you. You pretend to stop to encourage it to approach. What if he found our wallet and he's like a benevolent spider, dude, and he's just trying to return our finances to our own control? Had we considered that, or did we just jump straight to the conclusion that he's a quote-unquote bad guy? You know what I mean? Get too stealth when you start a level. Well, stealth build going strong right now. Uh, stealth build in full degaff mode. Probably take these little fights right here, but at this point we're steamrolling, so I don't think there's going to be too many things that are going to stop us from OW. Uh, this game is kind of like Slay the Spire, where like you know when you're going to win, and you like know when you're going to lose sometimes. But anyways, I like the game. Let me give you some thoughts about it, just kind of in conclusion. I put about three hours on into it, and I've unlocked some stuff. And honestly, I think that most of the things that they need to do with the game in order to really get it up to tip-top are presentational. So little things like splashes when you select a character on the menu where like a large portrait of that character would swing into half the screen, like the text would fade out and then it would give you on like the left side a display of their abilities, and if he's got like a fire load out, you know, the border of the screen would burst into flame to imply he's a fire character, or his portrait would slowly kind of become more translucent and fade into shadows with like leaves blowing along the bottom, you know, border of the screen to imply he's a stealth character. Things like that I think definitely make a game pop a little bit more. Stuff like when you kill a card with a fire ability. It'd be super cool if it would burn up into ash and blow away. Or like you slash the card with a sword card, it gets cut in half and the two little pieces of the card kind of blow away. You know what I mean? Things like having a few different frames for the portraits, like of your character's card, that like he has like a flinch animation when he gets hit. Or like the flame on top of Edward's head slowly has kind of a little four flame, or a four frame flaming animation that just undulates. Like, little additions like that, I think, ramp up the immersion when it comes to the presentational value of a game. And when I make suggestions like that, I know that oftentimes it's outside the budget constraints of the game or, like, what the art team can pull off. 
but the reason that some games really stick with you, you know, stuff like Darkest Dungeon or whatever, is because of those tiny little artistic touches that fill in the margins and make the game feel more alive and thematic. They don't really care. I'm sorry, they don't really matter in, like, the greater construction of the game. The game functions perfectly fine without them, but they're sort of the mortar that holds the bricks together. I've spent about two hours with the game at this point, and I like it. I don't think it's going to shake up the order of, like, you know, roguelikes that are coming out at the moment, but there is content to consume here, quite a bit of it, uh, with the characters and their alternate builds, lots of gameplay modes, and, of course, the journey mode, which at the point of this recording I hadn't unlocked yet, but actually I did unlock it at the end of the run that's currently playing on screen right now. Uh, I do like that the characters have different styles of play. The characters do feel distinct, which is very, very important, uh, with the ways that they're able to break the fourth wall or break the rules of the game and have run-changing statuses and abilities. I can't help but feel like maybe there's a tiny layer of complexity and agency that's missing for, like, longer play se sessions, but I was reasonably satisfied with how this one popped on screen when I was playing it. I mean, some games are not designed for long play sessions. You know, some games are meant to be, like, 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, and I think the game does well in that regard. Uh, with the UI, I do think they have a lot of wasted space during play, and I'd love to see a mode that has, like, five or, like, seven columns of paths instead of three to fill in some of that space uh, and if they don't do that I do think that the idea of using some of that side screen real estate during normal board play uh, being filled with kind of like instead of just having a counter for your coins you know like a pile of coins that as you pick them up little animated coins fall into the pile and it gets bigger sort of kingdom style or like a pile of skulls that gets larger as you kill more enemies with like a number next to it telling you the exact amount that you have so that when you go into shops you know you still are appraised of that information uh, things like a big health bar that shifts up and down as you get hit on the side and like implies how much damage you're going to take from poison would be really really cool but that would all come at the cost of maybe making the game more messy and a little bit less focused with regards to the information being presented. I've always liked flashier UIs, I guess. And so that that's kind of my own personal preference. But yeah, this is Forward Escape the Full. We're just about out of time, so I'm going to go. I liked it. It's a fun beer and pretzels game that you can play rapidly. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Forward Escape of the Fold. Tomorrow we will likely have something else. Thank you for hanging out, and that's all I got.